Hello, it's me, Rama, and I'm back with another video. And I'm demoing, uh, first of all, my very own skeletal mesh. Notice there's little wires inside his arms, and there's little wires inside his legs. Uh, and I made this fellow from scratch in 3ds Max. It's my very first model. I've never done any modeling before. And this is my very first one. Um, and it took a while. <laughs> but I did it! <laughs> And um, so I'm, I finally am beyond the ball here. I'm just using a simple ball, as you see in all my other tutorials. And I made a tethering system that works with skeletal mesh actors. And notice how when this tether is active, the, the pawn can still move around. I'm actually controlling these movements for the most part. I can maneuver myself onto this rock here. You can jump off and then grab on. So notice how you can switch in and out of this tether mode very easily. Like here I'm moving, everything's normal, I can swing and attack. I created a, pun a combat system of swinging and attacking. You can combo, see left, right, like that. And you can also roll. Check this out. You want to see something cool? <laughs> Whee! <laughs> I haven't uh, finished refining that, but actually, if you ever want to know about skeletal controllers, that's how I did this. Notice how the flow curls into a ball. For that curling into a ball thing, I did using skeletal controllers, not using animations, because I don't have a motion capture system. So this looks pretty good, but it's all done with skeletal controllers. That's not, uh, I didn't roll in front of a camera to get this fellow to do that. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, the point of this is tethering. Notice how uh, you can, I can control the tether's length. So I can, I'm pressing a key that changes the tether's length. Wow, I got right on top. Cool. Uh, I want to make that a little easier to see. So I'm going to zoom out. Uh, I think I'm going to fall and die. Uh, or the characters, anyway. So I'm not going anywhere. I plan to be immortal. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out here. And notice how I can actually control the tether's length using the arrow keys. So now it's really small. You know, you've seen this in, previous, in my ball video, but I can also make it get longer, right? So I'm controlling this all real time using keys on the keyboard, uh, or it could be controller keys. And it's I'm providing you with all the code how to do this. You'll have to choose what keys and key bindings to use, but the entire code to do it is provided. And, uh, and I'm going to retract it. And I want to try to get back on top of that rock again. That was cool. So you swing up. I did it! Wow, isn't that cool? And this is all in 3D third person, right? And this is my own 3D camera. Was something cool? I made the, you can control, you can move around with this 3D camera in any angle. And you can hold middle mouse button and sort of look all around. Um, or if you want, uh, you can actually uh, move up and down. You can move left and right. Like you can really control this camera any way you want, because that's what I like. I like to absolute control over whatever I'm doing. And, uh, and you can look out, you can look down, like you can do whatever you want uh, with this camera. I'm going to restore a, a standard preset, but I'm going to change it because I want to zoom out a lot. Um, so, um, with this tether, notice I, I swung on top of this bigger rock that's higher off the ground. Now I want to get over to that rock. So let's, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how smooth the movement transition is between tethering and running and walking. So I'm going to run and jump and then tether, and then swing, right? Ooh, I might even be able to get on top. And I can swing back. Or miss, because the edge of the rock is not quite pawn <coughs> friendly. But anyway, uh, but look at how smooth everything is in terms of gameplay. You just It's just very simple key presses and everything works. I'm going to sw swing over, jump and grab onto that, right? And um, my third person camera actually controls the looking down and the, the looking up uh, for me so that I can zoom really far out like this, but then when I look up it zooms in, when I look down it's... And the reason that's very useful, especially with a tethering system, is if I come up like this but then I want to aim down onto that rock, if I'm zoomed out like this, uh, but then I want to look down on top of that rock, uh, the camera needs to zoom in so I can actually not end up looking at the top of that rock. Um, so this is very useful to make the, make this gameplay very really fluid. But anyway, on with the tethering system. So notice how the tether attaches to a uh, socket on the skeletal mesh, the, that hand, right? And I'm playing an animation using the anim tree 
that I picked from the set of UT animations, and it's the Victory animation. That's the name of my entire project, is Victory. <laughs> and uh, notice the tether stays consistent with the movement of that hand during the animation. I provided with the entire code to do that, and you can pick whatever skeletal mesh socket you want to use, and it's really not that hard. And notice how as there's, there's this movement, you know, everything's very fluid and just looks very natural, but I'm not using rigid body physics. It's just velocity controls that I'm doing every tick, and yet it looks really good and very fluid, but it's so utterly simple on the CPU. It's easy to replicate. There's no rigid, rigid body physics that makes things complicated in terms of replication often because it changes the actor's location tends to change uh, a little more easily because it's... There's this, anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is, rigid body physics would be very complicated. And this doesn't use rigid body physics at all. I can, and I can retract the tether. Let's go up. Woo! Right? And it's just, uh, this rock apparently doesn't like me, the, the collision, the, uh, the balance of it don't particularly like me. The rock, top of the rock is very smooth. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, just look at how fluid and flowing it is, and yet it doesn't use rigid body. Oh, it was, I was having such a hard time trying to use rigid body. I could get I could get rigid body to work, but then um, after using rigid body, then the character would just spontaneously die or fly across the map. It was really messed up, and it would be very difficult on replication. Anyway, you see that this tether system works. And uh, one final feature I want to show you that I'm giving to you is how this tether charges its beam up. Uh, notice how when you first start the beam, I think we'll go down here. When you first start the beam, it starts simpler and then it gets more complicated, right? So it starts just it starts just pink, and then it gets those the additional rainbows added, right? It's a very serious looking tether. Um, you know, it has, has a very, very uh, strong sense of duty and focus in life. And so you see this, um, it's a little hard to see when I'm on the ground because of the grass. So notice how it charges up and then it gets fancy like that. There's a good way to see it. So that whole charge up effect, that's easy to control. It's in the, uh, the art. I'm providing you with this tether beam as an art asset because you need special settings for it to have it work properly with the skeletal mesh, which I explained in the tutorial. So this is my tethering system. I'm going to make it a little longer so I can swing around. I'm going to zoom out. And again, you can control the actor still uh, just using the standard WSD keys. You don't need to add impulses or do anything strange, which I thought I would have to do. I was trying to do it that way, and that was ridiculously annoying. But uh, I can still control the character, make it land where I want. So, hope you like the video, and hope you like my character. It's been a long time <laughs> getting him to work. His eyes glow, so make me happy.